Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Ohio Pain Network. Today's topic is an overview of RSD and CRPS. RSD stands for Reflex Sympathetic Dystrophy. CRPS is Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Both represent chronic neurologic pain syndromes that are very frustrating to both patients and doctors. The basic problem here is that you have an overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system that results either from trauma, surgery, or some unknown cause, and it just, it just doesn't shut off, okay? In the early 90s, the International Association for the Study of Pain changed the name from RSD to CRPS to try and better characterize the condition. However, both terms are still used interchangeably in the public's repertoire. How common is the problem? We don't know exactly. Total numbers are unclear, but it's somewhere between 5 and 12 million Americans suffer from RSD and CRPS. Three-fourths of those are female. It is unclear why it occurs. We know it involves overactivity of the autonomic nervous system, specifically the sympathetic part. The trigger, whether it's surgery, trauma, or something minor, it just sparks it up and doesn't shut it off. The symptoms um, are going to vary, but there's a severe burning pain that is intense and much stronger than what you would expect for the injury that was sustained. Okay? The pain tend to get worse over time rather than better. It starts at the point of injury, but then it can spread to the whole leg or arm, and then it can actually spread to the other side as well. There's often significant sweating, swelling of the tissues, extreme sensitivity, even with like a, just a light touch, even like a sheet you know, touching the area. Uh, bone and skin changes can be seen along with insomnia and emotional problems. There are three stages to CRPS. The first stage is one to three months. That includes skin temperature changes, muscle spasms, severe burning pain, hair and nail growth that is faster than normal, along with the beginning of some skin changes. You see some blotchy, pale, shiny, and sweaty skin. Stage two is in the three to six month category, and that's where you start to get more skin changes, some cracking of the nails. The pain continues to get worse. The hair growth actually starts to slow down and you start to get weak muscles and stiff joints. You know, it's so painful that you don't want to move it. The third stage is when irreversible changes set in. That involves muscle wasting, entire involvement of the leg or arm, and then contractions of the limb. You know, they've been painful, you haven't wanted to move them, and because of that, it starts to get contracted. Treatment options, um, it's very, very hard to cure these conditions, but they can be slowed and reversed significantly. Physical therapy can help. Various medication options are available, such as narcotics, antidepressants, blood pressure medications, anti-inflammatories, steroids, neuropathic medications like Lyrica and Neurontin, and even calcitonin. A lumbar sympathetic block can help for the lower extremities, and a stellate ganglion nerve block can help for the upper extremities. Uh, if, the, if that works and then wears off, it can be repeated, or a surgical sympathectomy could be in order. As a last resort, a spinal cord stimulator or an intrathecal drug pump may be indicated. What are the outcomes of treatment? It definitely depends on the timing. If it's gotten too earlier, the treatment is, um, outcomes are definitely better. A large study in the 80s showed that tre if treatment was started within two years of onset, success is over 80%. If it's at the two to five year mark, it's 70%. And if it started after that, the treatment options are lower, the outcomes are to only 10 to 20% success. There was a study looking at the annals of neurology in 2004, spinal cord stimulator for RSD in over 50 patients, showed very favorable outcomes for, the, uh, for RSD. There were some minor complications that are typical of spinal cord stimulators. Um, the leads could move, the uh, uh, infection could occur, some wound drainage. Um, one of those, the movement during motion, where a person is laying down and goes to stand up, it used to be that the older spinal cord stimulators didn't work so well, they didn't respond, but the new ones are able to adjust to a person's uh, movements uh, much, much better. Lumbar sympathetic block or still a ganglion blocks, that's when anesthetic is injected into the ganglia area. Uh, it warms the skin up immediately. It's usually about two degrees Celsius, therefore you know that it worked. Pain relief may occur quickly, or, and it may last for days to weeks. You may need one to two blocks per week with about five to permanently relieve a person's symptoms, or you may have to go on to an operative uh, sympathectomy. What are the outcomes? It's complicated. 
due to all that we don't know in the very presentation. But we know that combination individualized treatment is typically best and leads to the most successful outcomes. The goal overall is to break the cycle of the sympathetic overactivity and reduce the ongoing pain. If that can be accomplished, then the outcome is usually a success. The top non-operative pain management in Ohio is through the Ohio Pain Network. There are several clinics participating throughout the state, accepting over 50 insurances and providing over 25 different treatment options with the board certified physicians. Visit us online today at ohiopainnetwork.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 888-466-9898. I'm Dr. David Green with the Ohio Pain Network. Your pain stops here.